into it because we are joined back by the one, the only Kimberly Archie. Thanks for having me. Welcome back. I mean, look, you've been on this podcast before. You came on when The Housewife and The Hustler aired. And everyone that wants to listen to those episodes, we talked all about The Housewife and The Hustler and working with Tom. And those were good episodes. So anyone that wants to listen to those that hasn't can DM me and you can find those. But you are now back because August 6th, the day has arrived. It is Tom Girardi's trial. Are yeah. you, I mean, well, when I sat down, well, when I sat down, like knowing we were going to sit down and I prepared for a few seconds, you know, it shocks me because I lose track of time. This started November, 2020 is when it was announced that Tom and Erica were divorcing. Like we were just coming out of the pandemic, like four years ago. Like, I don't know. That shocks me because it doesn't, I didn't realize it was that long ago. Yeah. And I mean, and it really started as far as the imploding of the firm more than a year before it became public. So it's been over five years. Uh, you know, it was Cinco de Mayo 2019 when I met with Tom to ask him to pay the Ragomez's the money that he owed them. Um, and so, yeah, that's the five year anniversary of that. It's insane how much time has passed. And imagine the victims, you know, some of them have been fighting for more than 30 years. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, I, I can't even imagine what that is like. And you are covering this all in a very new podcast. Uh, the Victims, you're working with, we just had Chris Hansen on our show, Predator and Plain Sight, Tom Girardi, like three episodes are out. I was part of it. And you're literally going to be covering the trial every day. Yeah, so I'll be covering the trial every day. And of course, I'm on the witness list. But um, you don't really know until, you know, right before the trial exactly who's testifying and what day you testify and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm sort of in a holding pattern to see, like, wh what are my limitations going to be? Or, um, you know, because you're not allowed to go into the trial prior to testifying. So, um, you know, if I'm on day three then I'm not allowed in the courtroom until I testify. Then after I testify, then I'm allowed in. Um, but yeah, Chris and I will be covering it every day. And perhaps someone might have to fill in for me for a day or something if I actually get called to testify and I'm not like on the first day. Did they, I mean, is that like, uh, is it likely you're going to be called in? Like, is that a strategic move of like, you do talk about this stuff here, you are behind the velvet rope. Now you have your own podcast. Like, are they, do they put you on the list to personally drag it out to the last day so that you can't physically be in the courtroom? Do you think? Um, you know, I, I, the, I'm on the list for the prosecution. So, um, you know, that would be the government side, not Girardi. That's so true. Girardi's the one that I'm sort of, uh, I think on his nerves a little bit right now, as well as, uh, um, his attorneys. So, you know, that they might do some strategic moves to try to keep me out of the courtroom because they're definitely upset about our podcast. You know, they filed a subpoena to get copies of all the audio, um, of the podcast. They, mentioned it in another filing, you know, with the judge and made try to make some kind of big deal about me doing a podcast coming out right before the trial. Um, they probably weren't expecting the podcast to do so well. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, that's what I'm imagining. And then, you know, as it creeped up the charts, you know, on iTunes, uh, I think they became more concerned about the fact that, uh, you know, the words getting out there and our, our podcast was really, a, especially the three part podcast that's already out prior to the trial. Um, it really focuses on the victims and tries to give them a voice beyond a soundbite. And, and I think we did that. I think you did that also. 
have they chosen i mean this will probably this will air like on the day the trial starts or the day after but like have they chosen a jury yet or is that i mean that must be a hard process like i know not everyone watches beverly hills housewives like i do and like my listeners but like it's still like i saw some of the questions like it's you know do you know erica jane do you know beverly hills housewives like is the jury chosen yet so what's happened so far um, is that they've done what they call time qualifying, meaning that they have a jury pool that can um, go throughout the duration of what they think the process is going to last. So they have a group that's been time qualified. Then on August 1st, which will happen you know, between now and, and when this airs, um, they'll go over the jury questionnaire that you just mentioned, which interestingly enough, and I'm surprised it hasn't been covered more by... Um, you know, Bravo influencers, the fact that the questionnaire for the jury all circles around Bravo, which I always laugh when I hear everything leads to Bravo because I'm, you know, I've learned over the last four years that that's sort of true. It's not just a saying. <laughs> so it's not like there's a lot of questions on there like, do you know who Erica Jane is? Do you watch Beverly Hills Housewives? Have you ever watched Beverly Hills Housewives? Do you have any thoughts on Erica? Do you have any thoughts on Tom? Like it is very Bravo centric, this questionnaire it is and and it seems like tom and his defense team are using erica's notoriety to sort of do this very thorough questionnaire which you know if you were sitting in the war room for a trial with the, with the attorneys you know a questionnaire can be sort of a little mini trial you're always trying to educate the judge and the jury about your case and this this long questionnaire seems to give them like an early bite at the apple, which I find really interesting. Will it tip the scales in Tom's favor to confuse the jury in some kind of way because it's been narrowed down? You don't have as generic of a jury as you would without the questionnaire. Will the questionnaire work in the favor of the victims? Uh, you know, it's like a time will, will only tell on this. But I think that, you know, one of the things most people probably don't realize even if they've watched like Housewife and the Hustler one and two, or they saw the American Greed episode or seen me on your you know podcast before talking about it, is that there's only four cases in the trial. Tom's not being tried for all his crimes, which is you know a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because the clock's ticking. If it was a bigger case, he probably could have pushed it down the road longer and maybe we would have never seen uh, you know, Tom in a courtroom being tried for his crimes. But now that we're just doing four cases, people aren't going to hear the totality of his crimes. And what is the judge going to let in for the jury to hear about how Tom's been doing this forever? There is one thing that people that watch your podcast might be interested in, and that's the $25 million that went into Erica's LLC is going to be evidence in this trial. And the jury will know that Tom funneled all those millions from clients to Erica. That's going to be a big deal. That's going to be a big deal, especially as the days of the trial move on. And I mean, like for everyone who doesn't know, like this trial was originally slated for May. Like it's already been pushed out by Tom and his defense team to August. They just tried to push it out again. And the judge said no. Twice they've tried in the 